You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> At the Water's Edge, by Cody Simon, performed by Otis Gyre. Winston rode with a near-mechanical stride. The lake, being only illuminated by the soft glow of the moon, was empty. But that was not out of the ordinary, considering the time of night that Winston chose his outings. This was the same for nearly forty years. The routine never changed for the wearied old man. His Friday nights were always spent out on these waters. He would jokingly tell friends that the only reason he was still alive was because of these weekly trips. But the honest truth was that fear kept him alive, more so than anything else, that is. Not the fear of death, however, for death, he reasoned, would be a welcome escape from the personal hell that he lived in. No, it was the fear of the repercussions that his absence would bring that scared him the most. A chill set in on Winston as he approached the muddy banks of the small island. The feeling of dread was something he had never been able to get used to. With his heavy heart and his muscles stiff, he tied the boat to the post and retrieved the heavy burlap sack that he had brought with him. The contents, being macabre in nature, were heavy, not just in a physical sense, however, for the majority of the weight was burdened on his heart. He knew, though, with every fiber within him, that this was a necessary evil. It had been four decades since the last murder in his small town, and he swore to God and himself that he would do whatever in his means to keep the horror at bay. Winston sat the burlap sack down at the entrance of the cave and began to collect leaves and small branches off of the ground placing the foliage in a barrel that he had brought years ago. He retrieved a book of matches from his pocket. The light that emitted from the fire did nothing, however, to illuminate the inside of the cave. This was a blessing to him, though. He never wanted to see the inside of that horrid place again. He was twenty-one when he last stepped foot in there, and on that ill-fated day... He had managed to lose the best friend that he had ever had to the grotesque being that resided in there. He never questioned why he was spared, for on that day the beast made it clear to him why he was left alive. Not with words, though, for the creature communicated in thought. Winston was to bring an offering once a week, it didn't matter from where, but it had to be delivered without delay on every seventh day. A small form, maybe four feet tall, began to emerge from the mouth of the cave. Winston shuddered in disgust. For all the forms that this being could take on, it preferred that of a small girl. Only the face was horribly distorted. With eyes two times larger than that of a normal child, and a smile that raged from literal ear to ear, its elongated teeth were sharp, and had the appearance of being filed down to a needle-like point. The dress, still caked in dried blood from the previous week, had lace adorning the hem. Winston hated this form, and to make matters even worse, the creature knew this. With expectant eyes and an impossible grin, the being watched as the old man began to untie the burlap sack. The content was then laid out at the feet of the monster. The lifeless body of a small calf was neatly placed on the ground. Winston watched in horror as the creature devoured the meal. 
with the animal consumed, bones included, the being stared blankly at Winston. Head cocked to the side, still holding that insidious grin. A small hand extended toward the old man. He stared in horror while the disfigured little girl clutched his trembling hand. And with that, she disappeared. Winston traded his life for another some forty years ago. But what he didn't know was that his life was to be spent feeding this beast. And that is a life that no one wants.